how will you expect us to take you serious? Um, I have nothing to say regarding the absence of my siblings, but I am here to represent them no matter what. And so you want us to listen to you. I have a voice, don't I? Just because they aren't here in this present moment doesn't mean what I say does not count. It'll be in your best interest. What? South the Red? Or could it possibly be, Armand, that your siblings are long gone? Do not dare speak that over my family. Come on, after all these years, I haven't seen a single one of them. How do we know you're not lying? Do you even hold the power to make demands or threats? I would not. Hey, cut it out. Fine, suit it yourself. If you would like this family of hooligans running around making demands and whatnot, then you keep bowing down. Hmm. What, the cat's got your tongue? And why would she say that, Armand? What would give her any reason to say that? I don't know. We'll figure out. We've got to do something about that. I won't hold back for very long, and you know that, Mama. <laughs> Perhaps uh, I got this, and don't tell Mother. She'll cause a rage in the head. Shit. If the sands belong west, I go south. That's where they're stating. I must listen. As the stars peeked out from the heavens, our mom looked at them, gazed them, took quarter, graph his direction in which he traveled. He always did this. He listened deeply to the stars. He just looked at them and they would tell him things. Our mom Seeing a pointy star, one that shined ever so brightly. Then he seen it move across in a certain direction. He took a mental note of it as he'd be heading that direction as soon as dawn breaks. As the next morning, our mom traveled southeast until 12 p.m when his shadow centered. When Armand arrived, he seen great ruins in front of him, as if the city had been abandoned. Relations had to be wrong, but he trusted the guidance he would had so far. He got out his dagger, as this must have been a test to his strength and his intelligence. Armand's hands gripped the dagger ever so tightly as blood started rushing to his fingertips, his heart slightly elevating, but still his motion stable. There was no entrance to the empire that once was. He just let himself in through a great gaping hole in what was said to be the tallest cinder block standing, said to encapsulate the most richest city, Ambithia. As he stepped over piles and piles of ancient stone and scrabble, a pink in his heart began to spawn, as though to symbolize the inner pain of it all. His emotions remained stable. He heard a weeping and quickly clutched 
onto his dagger tightly once again. There couldn't possibly have been anyone in the city. Why would they? There was nothing left of it. The weeping got louder and louder as he got closer to it. Ready to take down wherever it was. It's probably something not human. Especially in these conditions alone. He stopped for a little bit as he noticed the weeping had. It had been just inside a building that he had got real close to. He was ready to turn a corner at any moment and be faced with the hideous sight of something he had had to slay. He got used to this over the years. He turned the corner quickly only to be met with a lady who had been holding herself in the corner. With his car still up, his heart had skipped a beat. She looked innocent, no more than a couple hundred years old. And it was getting dark too. Armand had started to feel bad until he realized that monsters also do come in many different looks. However, who are you? The girl asked. Armand had not felt the need to answer that question. As he just stood there, clicking his tongue, wondering what to do with her. I said, who are you? Armand clutched his dagger once again, ready for a strike. He had gotten used to not asking questions. Well, if you're not here to help, you might as well leave. There is nothing to help in the city. It's gone. And why are you here alone? Answer my question. Armand states, I was born here. It's none of your concern if you're not going to help. Born? Armand says to himself, I had to been about 50,000 years ago. This woman it's not. His anger spikes, as though he felt like he was being tricked. <laughs> we better get going. I mean, well, that is if you know your way around here. It's pretty wicked at night. You could hear him now. <laughs> Armand had bitten his tongue. He knew that the areas of the sand were deadly even for beings like him. Where and what's going on? <laughs> now you're curious. Scared for your life? Should be. I'm on his dagger. Whoa, whoa. No need for the violence. Well, there's these people. Oh, I don't really know what to call them people. They stand about 10 feet tall and they have these things in their hand and they drag people somewhere. It's quite scary. And there's a lot of them. Armand knew she wasn't lying. His recollection of the records stated they were beings of such wrapped in bandages in the sandlands. Though they weren't completely bad, they did not discriminate between life and death. For whoever had been in the area would be deemed impure and would be dealt with. And then their punishment for doing so in the ethers were minimal, as they were on assignment. By who and what? We don't know. But that is a long case to battle. He must take note of it. Where must we go? Yeah, I guess we should stop playing around now. There's a building. I enchanted it. And we should be safe for the night. But I don't need you acting crazy in there. Okay? Put your daggers away. Armand puts both of his daggers up. He's still taking note of them and the placements. After about 15 minutes of building hopping, trying not to be seen, these things weren't necessarily all visible. She made them even more deadly. You could hear them, 
but the only notification they were near or had seen you is if they started moaning. They spent about 15 minutes trying to get to the building, safe and sound. They didn't want a battle on their hands. As they got inside the building and settled down, the girl began cooking. The aromas took over his entire senses, and he had never smelled food like this in centuries. <laughs> I guess you are born from here. Of course, <laughs> why would I lie? But something doesn't make sense. Why are you still here looking like this? <laughs> you mean not freaking old? Listen, I hear you're a skeptic, but we still exist. My specific bloodlines to be exact. We're just nomads. <laughs> Armand closes his stone as he has nothing more to say but to devour the food does not want to upset her. Not right now anyway. They were locked in for the night. After he eats, they begin to fall asleep. Our mom hanging on a little bit longer because he's still skeptical. Nonetheless, he falls into the dream world.